Hi everybody, my name is Greg Bragg. I'm the Celestron Specialty Account Sales Manager. I take care of the specialty telescope retailers that actually help you guys uh, buy telescopes. So uh, we've been getting a, a ton of questions about the Mars opposition that actually occurs on October 13th. Uh, it's not too far around the corner now. It's just over, just less than a month away. So we wanted to give you some tips and tricks on how to observe that with uh, the, you know, the, the best opportunity to get a great view of it. Uh, as you know, in 2003, it uh, came to its closest opposition to us. I don't know if you know this, but it's not going to happen again until 2287. Uh, so we're in a great opportunity right now to take a look at it uh, at its brightest um, uh, b between the 2003 and the 2287 uh, opposition. So it's going to be relatively bright. It's going to be a negative 2.6 magnitude. Uh, it's going to actually be brighter than Jupiter, not quite as bright as Venus. But in the night sky, it will be the brightest object uh, for the next 45 or so days through the end of October for sure. And we encourage you to get out right now and start looking at it. It is rising in the uh, early evening and will be up most of the night. But through the month of October, it will be up at dark and won't um, stop until uh, won't set until early the next morning. So you get a chance to look at it an awful lot, and that's a, a great opportunity to see this a planet at, at the optimum time. Uh, a lot of people have asked us what telescopes to use. We encourage you to use the biggest telescope you can uh, find, but anything from a 60 millimeter to a 90 millimeter will show you some of the surface markings on Mars. I don't think you'll get to see the polar caps and stuff like that with a smaller aperture like that, but you will be able to see the reddish and you will be able to see some colorations, which are uh, dust storms and mountain ranges and stuff like that on the planet. So you will get a chance to see it, but we, we really think the optimum viewing will be from a schmidt cassegrain or a Maksutov cassegrain. Uh, a six, eight, you know, inch or nine and a quarter inch or even an 11 inch would be uh, optimum. Uh, something that gets you around 150 magnification uh, and, and give you the ability to, to uh, you know, really get in there tight on it and see all the features of the planet. Uh, uh, if you want to see the moons of Mars, you will need something in the 11 to 14 inch range or bigger. The, the, there's two moons. They're relatively small. I've never seen them myself through even up to a 12 inch telescope, uh, but I have seen the mountain ranges and the dust storms and stuff like that. And it's pretty impressive. Of course, it's red. Of course, it's very reddish colored. Uh, and, and that uh, will help you identify it in the night sky. When you're looking up to, to try to identify it, it's going to be obviously pretty red compared to everything else, and that'll give you a chance to uh, um, find it in your telescope and observe it. We do recommend a few things. Um, go ahead and start observing now. Don't wait until the 13th. Uh, go ahead and take your telescope out a, an hour or two before the uh, sky uh, gets dark and and let it cool off and stabilize equalize with the uh you know atmospheric temperature and stuff that will help the optics perform at their best if you've got a, a dobsonian or something like that uh, you want to make sure you collimate it as best you can that'll give you the best opportunity to see it with the most resolution the most detail and and we want you to do it every night if you can the more you get a chance to see it, the more chances you'll get to see observations. It has a similar rotation as we do. It's a, a couple of hours longer than ours. Uh, so if you go out at the same time every night, you'll get a chance to see it in different uh, different uh, uh, spots on, on the planet. And then you may be able to find different things that you haven't been able to see. Uh, that's kind of one other thing. There's a, there, there is an opportunity to use some filters, and that is... Um, uh, of, of, there's a wide variation of filters, but what we want you to do is go to Celestron.com and we want you to just type in the search engine that uh, Mars Observing Guide. We put together a great uh, guide that will uh, help you understand all the things that are going to happen uh, to the planet in the, in the next 45 days to, you know, 60 days. And it'll give you an idea of what telescopes to use, what filters to use. It'll give you details about that kind of stuff. And that will be um, very helpful for you. Uh, you can share that, download it, do all that kind of stuff, print it. And then uh, it'll help you um, make full uh, use of your telescope and the opportunities to observe this really pretty cool uh, event in the night sky. 
We want you to keep looking up. Thanks very much for tuning in, and we will see you again soon. Bye.